Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's just Bati. <laughs> I just got back from my daily activities which is my work and as you can see I'm still in the car I'm yet to go inside but there's something that has been on my mind I just decided to like spare a couple of minutes to educate you guys about my God so today I'm just gonna be talking about my relationship with God so what is my relationship with God what do I stand for Okay, as you all know, I am a very, 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 <laughs> I like to think I'm a very, very professional Christian. I may not be perfect, but at least I have the fear of God in me and I'm working towards getting a deeper relationship with my father in heaven. Now, why did I choose this topic? I chose this topic because I feel like um, someone having a relationship with God is often misunderstood a lot of times. So when somebody say I have a good relationship with God, you expect that the person is a saint, um, has no skeletons in the cupboard, which sometimes it's it's most likely, but no one is holy, okay? No one is 100% holy. We all have our faults. I like to tell people that I'm fully faulted, like very imperfect. It does not mean I'm going around sinning, but I know that as a human, I have shortcomings. I could also hate someone. I could also dislike someone. Do you understand? But I just try to control it. When I find somebody that I dislike, I just mute because I don't want to be exposed to such mindset. So that's how I control mine, okay? So that's on that. Okay, so I would like us to do like something like an interactive section because I have a couple of questions I would like to answer. And while I'm answering it, I'll also like you to answer the same questions. You can type it down in the comment section is just more about self-reflection okay once in a while you ask yourself these questions to find out if you're in the right path so the first question is um, what's my relationship with God which I've already stated I feel and I believe that I love God I believe that I'm a Christian I believe that I want to walk in the ways of God I believe that I want to do right I believe that I want to impact in my society in a positive way I believe I want to be an exemplary person to my children to my family to everybody around me and I believe that I want to be a good person so I am a good person do you understand so okay the second question is um, what does God mean to me? Right? I would say God is my everything because most times I feel like if I make a move without involving my father in heaven, I feel like that move is like, how will I put it? May or may not go out well. But once I involve him in it, I know that 100%, whichever way it turns out to be, it's going to be good. Okay. So I always try as much as I can to involve God in every in everything I do, in every decision making I take, because as a mom, as an entrepreneur, as a wife, you take decisions every day. And those decisions can sometimes take a toll. Like you might be faced with two drastic decisions and you're like thinking which one is the right one to go. It may not be that serious. And on the other hand, it can be very, very serious. But once you involve God in it, I feel like at the end of the day, you end up choosing the right one and the right one works for you. Okay. So my, what does God mean to me? I feel God means everything to me. He guides me in my daily life. He guides me in my business. He guides me in my decision making. He guides me in my health. I could be going through a health phase. And before you know, he would just say, okay, do this, do that, do this. And you see that I'll find out that I'll get myself, you know, along the line. Now, secondly, there's nobody that has not been through something in this life. All of us are going through something. All of us are battling with something. It's just that the other person doesn't know. Okay. So you see me and say, okay, I'm enjoying that's not true. Yes, possibly I'm enjoying, but I also have the battles I'm battling with. So I feel like without God, I would not be where I am. So that's what God means to me. He, he's my everything. He's my protector. He's my, he's my everything. I feel like I really want to have a deeper relationship. And I think that I'm getting there. I would not say I'm there completely because I still have faults. Okay. Okay. So the next question is, how did I meet God? How did I meet God? How did you meet God? I would say that okay growing up in school in university days yes i was supposed to be like a buddy and all of that but i kept on seeing like that i had like a guy there and i kept on like he kept on doing things for me i know it sounds like 
I'm just with God because of the things he's doing for me. Sometimes, of course, we are humans, but you still have to ask yourself, what can I do back for him, okay? So that's on the corner. I kept on seeing his hand in both in the bad decisions I was making and also the good ones. I remember sometimes when I get stuck in a certain situation, I just pray, close my eyes, and I, then I pray for a minute. I say, God, please just come through for me. Mind you, if I don't close my eye, that prayer doesn't work. <laughs> like, if I just say it out of the blue, like, ah, God, please do this for me. It feels like it's just ordinary word. But once I close my eye and put it in Jesus' name, in the form of a prayer, everything just gets so it's sold out. Whether it is clearance, whether it is any issue, financial, physical, it was just so easy that once I say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God, this is my problem. Can you help me out with it? I'll just see it. Now, after that, coming to get married, I've still been seeing his hands all over my life. Like the things he does for me, even without asking. The things, the difficult things he makes easy for me and all of this. So I, I've come to realize that I mean something to him. And if he doesn't mean something to me back, that means I'm cheating out on myself. Okay, so I want him to mean something to me as much as I mean something to him. So I can get the full potential of the glory and the umbrella of God Almighty. Okay, so that's that. Yeah, so um, the next one is how is it going? Yes, how is it going? It's going good actually. Because like I said, once you hand over everything to God and it just takes care of the rest. No matter how difficult it is. Whether financially, whether spiritually, whether health-wise, whether educationally. I advise you just put it in God's hand. Okay, you don't even really necessarily have to go to someone else to pray for you. You see that close relationship you have with him, with, between yourself and God. You close your eyes and you call upon him. He just answers. Somehow he answers. Okay, if you are going a step further, you can also feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in your decision making. You know, maybe when you're walking and you feel like there's somebody walking at your back that is, that's got your back. Yes, that's how it's going with me, basically. But there are some times when I feel like I've backslided though a bit. Maybe I'm not being 100% with my Bible. Maybe I'm enjoying too much and all of that. So I still feel that disconnect with him. And then immediately I feel it. If I'm being remorseful, I'm trying to be truthful here. If I'm being remorseful, I'll try to patch that up little by little. But once you lose it, you've lost it until you can bring it back. Okay? Bringing it back is you acknowledging that, okay, God, (laughs) somehow I went for a break. Okay? I'm back here. Even if it's not allowed, but you know, God forgives. I'm not saying this is permission to sin or anything, but I know that there are some times that you just backslide. Backslide might not be sinning, but lose that touch. What I'm talking about now is relationship with God. You have a relationship with somebody that feels like it's a long distance relationship. If you guys don't talk for one or two years, does not mean you cheated two days. Sorry. Does not mean you cheated on, cheated on him, but somehow that relationship became a little bit scraggy or rough you understand so that's what i'm talking about by backsliding you did not check up on him and you did not care to want to hear from him okay so when i have something like that i try to reconnect as much as possible okay so that's it so the last one is um how can you incorporate god into your daily life i always say that i'm actually i feel like i'm a very busy person most of times because from school runs, I have to get to my store, I have to do some work, and actually work, I actually work, most times I work all day long, I have to press my phone, I have to edit videos, I have to upload videos, I have to think of other things to do, so my own stress is actually mentally, so doing this, thinking of all this, I end up running my day, so where do I find time to fix God in? I feel like everyone should have a time for God. So my own time for God is 10 p.m. I have checked throughout my day and this is the time I know that every day by 10 p.m. I can meet with my father. So I make an arrangement with him and say, okay, by 10 p.m. I'm going to meet with God every day. I pray about it. I invite him into that time and he blesses that time and that time becomes our time every day. Do you understand? I know that once I'm done with that, my time with God, I sleep. So by 9, 30, 10 o'clock, I'm done pressing my phone. I'm done doing everything. Possibly my kids have have, have gone to bed. My husband possibly sleeping or watching TV. And I know that, okay, this this time is time for God. Even if it's an hour, even if it's 30 minutes, even if it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. 
use that time to talk to God. And if you do this consistently, you find out that at that exact time, the Holy Spirit comes to wait for you. What I mean by this, sometimes I just sleep off. Let's imagine I was very tired and I sleep off by 8.30. Do you know that at exactly 10 o'clock, I would wake up. I don't know what wakes me up. There's now like a hidden alarm in my head to wake up. Bye bye, it's time. Or I'm possibly waking up to ease myself. I just know that it's the Holy Spirit, not Jimmy. That guy, it's time. So that's how I keep to God. I want to encourage everybody to have a special time with God. You choose this time, you pray about this time, you dedicate this time, and then you say, okay. This time is my time with God. And you keep on going to God at that particular time every day. And you see that that will be your altar. Okay. So how I encourage everybody to have their altar time and their altar days. Every day is your altar day, but just have your altar time. Okay. You can also incorporate fasting. You can incorporate um, Christian music. Yes. Anything can be done around that time. If you still have spare time. You still add God to your spare time. But this is my time for God that I don't mess with. So guys, that's it. That's all I have on today's episode of My Prayer Life with God. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can find these tips useful in your own relationship with God. So I'm going to see you guys next time.